and I'm a big, huge fan of of 8-Bit Do. I'm guessing that's how you pronounce the name of the company. You can see I have one of their, I have the SN30 Pro right behind me here. Um, they've announced a new arcade stick, and if you remember back in the day, the old Nintendo, was it the Nintendo Arcade? I remember they had the, the NES N- Advantage, the too. The NES but... Advantage was the one that I had. Yeah, that uh, was like the go-to. The Advantage was the joystick? Yep. Okay. Because I remember, what was the one, the, the NES Max had like the weird... The NES, um, the NES Max was bullshit. Yes. Just... So this is more like the the, the better of the two. Um, it's a full-fledged arcade stick. It has a player one, player two button. Numerous buttons for remapping. The joystick, from what I read, is removable. If you remember the old turbo buttons, though you can turbo charge your, your buttons. Um, the cool thing about 8 Do is they also have a software application that you can use to kind of tweak the settings on the device. The one thing that I thought was super cool about this, if you play um, anything on your Raspberry Pi from like a, a modding perspective, this can be Bluetooth. Mm. There's a like tuck away 2.4 gigahertz USB receiver. And for people that are think that wireless has too much lag for the professionals, um, it can be wired into the device as well. I've had some hit or miss with Bluetooth on like Raspberry Pis and whatnot, trying to get that configured depending on what you're running from like a retro Pi or, or whatever perspective. Um, it will work in a couple of different modes too with, um, it'll actually work with Nintendo Switch. Hmm. Um, as well as PCs and other devices alike. Um, so just an all-around nice-looking uh, joystick, along with you know being able to use it with a ton of different uh, setups, as well as also being their, their I think they call it alt is it ultimate? Yeah, the 8-bit do ultimate software um, lets you remap buttons and also lets you create macros. So I love this. So, right? They're showing like if you're a modder, like you talk about like the kind of joystick being able to take off, but like they're showing you can open this up, and if you're like a, a you know a joystick modder, like you can go in and change the buttons in and everything too. Like it's and and, and actually make adjustments, I guess, to mm-hmm. to how how firm they are and things like that. So that's cool. That's cool. It, even at the ninety dollar, I think ninety dollars might be expensive for for some to just buy a joystick. I think that I look at for. For how many devices you can use this with, yeah, the different yeah. connectivity, and even if you didn't want to mod it, but hey, the button broke, mm-hmm. you could you could probably work if you're if you're into buying this type of thing, you can probably work your way through a button replacement because it's so large. It's not like you're taking apart an iPhone. Yeah, um, it's a pretty large device, and I, they said it also has nice weight. Um, so if whether you're putting it on some kind of tabletop or you want to just set it on your lap, there's there's a ni- nice weight to it. Um, I'd say not the prettiest, but again, if you're you're kind of throwing back to that NES Advantage kind of uh, uh, look to it, I think it's it's really it's really cool. So as long as it works and feels good, I want to stay on the Nintendo side for for a moment here. Um, we actually so so every Monday night we have this Monday Mayhem Warrior show, which we finally settled on a name, and it's really just Mad Mike and me just kind of coping with the fact that Monday Night Raw sucks, and he tells me about what Legos he's working on, or we talk about Wandavision or The Mandalorian, right? I know it's a wrestling podcast, uh, but this week I I wanted to share this one because this was really cool. We talked about on here before the uh, Nintendo. Uh, a Lego kit is that is, right? Like that's something that's come up, right? The one that's like the Nintendo system and the TV and everything like that. So he's showing it off last night, and uh, there's a video over a Wrestling Mayhem show um, on on YouTube, and and again it's from the last night's show. And uh, so he's showing me this, and the TV. He's picking up the TV, which looks heavy, and I'm like, how is how is that thing so heavy? You know, it's the Mario, and he moves up and down, and and there's like kind of a Lego brick. Um, um, like kind of pattern uh, behind them. It just looks like a little kind of diorama thing. But the thing I didn't realize, it moves. You build a device with a crank and it scrolls the background behind Mario as you move him on the TV. <laughs> so it just, and this is an official Lego set. I, I haven't seen 
like something that m- turned into that hefty of a device with the there's definitely bricks like scrolling around on some kind of wheel inside the thing you built. <laughs> so this is this is a big set. This is like a two hundred fifty dollars set. I looked it up after this show. It's crazy, but um. And, and let's say everything like the plugs, the RCA plugs all look look right and everything like that. So I, I just thought that's something that uh, the audience over here would would enjoy. So um, I don't have the patience for Lego kits. I really should. I guess it's a good mindfulness thing, but uh, I'm just not up for it. So um, he's built everything. He's built like the um, the giant Hogwarts castle, and, and my ar- my arms are outstretched because that is how big it is. Um, the like super set that they they have, like it's all segmented and everything like that. So, um, what else do we have here, Katie? What is going on in the social media world here? Uh, so Facebook and Instagram are improve. They're both improving their AI for captions, image captions. Um, uh, when you know when you when you're posting photos, you should be going in and um essentially like adding a description to your photo. So if someone was uh, blind or having a, a visually or visually impaired, they'll be able to tell what's in your photo because it reads, um, it'll read the caption out loud. And uh, essentially the alt, it's called the alt text. I couldn't think of the word. The alt text is the phrase, but essentially it's like the metadata within your photo. So it tells if you've ever taken a photo and you've adjusted that. Um, but um, it's the AI. So in case you're not putting those descriptions on your photos, it is able to dig a little deeper instead of just being uh, the example I give is like, this is an image, maybe a person of one, maybe an image of a person standing at Machu Picchu. And now they're like, maybe an image of five people, including this person playing musical instruments, two people are standing, two hats, five drums. So it's a much broader description, which is really, really cool. And it's, it's an amazing how, well, it's, we, we should be further along with the AI, I think, as far as this kind of stuff goes. But it's um, they kind of it's a huge jump from where they've been to where they are now, which is exciting. And um, giving the position of the different photo people in the photo, it's it's really neat. So mm-hmm. in case you, you're not adding image descriptions for your alt text on your uh, photos, uh, people who are blind or visually impaired will still be able to enjoy them. So is this is this happening across the board, regard regardless of opt in at this point? Yeah, it sounds like it's just a thing that is just happening. Because, yeah. I mean, um, and, you know, the, the general poster, you know, is not doing this. Like, mm-hmm. isn't even thinking about, like, the only reason we do because we work in the space, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that's good because you're not going to get, you're not going to get a mass amount of people to do this. And then you basically have just, like, have a white slate on half of it for, for, the, for the impaired um, when you're doing yeah. visuals. And I've never, and I, I need to dive a little deeper into this, but I've never, um, I don't know how much it impacts the searchability of your photos mm-hmm. on Facebook and Instagram, because essentially, because it is metadata that if you were searching, if you were Googling an image of something and you have in your alt text, uh, I'm looking for a white horse in a field or whatever, mm-hmm. um, was an example, uh, if that would pop up because the, the alt text being on there and if the AI was able to assist with that. I don't, but I haven't, yeah, I haven't really seen a lot of information in regards to that. If it um, helps with the searchability. So it looks like um, as it's saying here in the, in the tech crunch article, uh, the new detailed description will uh, come to Facebook first for testing, though the improved vocabulary will appear on Instagram soon. So, you know, kind of behind the scenes, but it helps out um, um, other people. So mm-hmm. um, there you go. Um, and, uh, um, uh, Amanda, I, I saw a note in here of something that you've been uh, trying out, and I actually so so you brought up Clubhouse in the Slack and the invites, and I messaged you right after they were talking about it on Twit, uh, because uh, Leo and and I Justine were actually discussing it and uh, and 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 helped me sell on because like, again, looking at it, like I didn't really get the concept, um, but that really kind of drove it home. Uh, can you explain to everybody what what Clubhouse is? So Clubhouse is if you would take the AOL chat rooms and have speakers and then listen to it live. Mm -hmm. So like take like a a panel of people and just, but it it, it could be anybody. Like I was on the other night, um, I happened to go into this chat room that was Pittsburgh musicians and they asked me to be on the panel to speak. 
And I, I, I declined because I didn't know anybody in the room, obviously, but like literally, and it, it's, um, the way I can really just, that's the best way to describe it. It's basically like on demand conferences that you can listen to speakers and it's everything from, um, I was in a social media s- speak yesterday where they were just talking about brand and advancements and like how to reach bigger customers and like audiences to um, Gary V was talking the one day just for 20 minutes and you, but you got like, and it's a chat room. So they can literally reach out to you and ask you to talk and, or you can raise your hand and talk. So there's a little bit more interaction there than your typical, like sit in a conference room and listen to a person talk for two hours. Um, something locally, I'm part of a, a, a all women's group called um, Gather and Grow, and they're using it three times a week to just have gab sessions while we listen to music, just to be like a supportive group. Mm-hmm. Um, like, yeah, I was on with TikTokers the other day and Instagram influencers for an hour. It was great. It was really, really interesting and insightful. And they were actually talking about being your authentic self. It was topics like that, that you don't normally get in a conference setting like South by Southwest. They were talking about how like, like, um, Sophia Moroza, who runs, um, Nasty Girl, who wrote Girl Boss, and she's been in a million books, rags to that, like rags to riches story. And she was talking about how, like, she had to talk about losing a child, like, on it and on social media. And that was, like, how she was authentic and things like that. Like, it was just, it was a very neato thing to not, I don't know. It's just a lot different. It's it's so, so the barrier for me is always, like, kind of jumping in on something like this. Because that's what I hear, like, oh, so-and-so came in, let's let them in. Like, I'm... And even I think I was in a room actually while we were discussing this. Like I'm seeing like daily habits for high performers with like 400 people in there. 24 hour vibes. Introduce yourself. Stock market gems. It is a little bit of like I feel like I feel like it's like well what's this versus a Zoom meeting? But I guess it's like what if you had an open Zoom meeting, which feels so dangerous because I remember when we had open Google Hangouts in the early days and the weird things that would happen on our shows. Uh, but. <laughs> Um, but, oh, I'm still in it. That's the, why is my name still there? That's interesting. Uh, but. The, and the cool thing is, is like, you don't get to talk unless the panel people tell yes. you you can talk. Yeah. So you can raise your hand. So yeah. there isn't like any of that type of weird stuff going on, but it's, you know, what I really think of it is like, remember the boot camps like of years and years ago and kind of like what we based pod camp on mm-hmm. and where you could just jump from room to room to room to learn from anybody and everybody. It's almost like that on a larger scale. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. It's a digitized version of that. Wait, wait, are you saying? Are you saying? Are you saying we can bring back PodCamp digitally through this concept? Is that what's happening <laughs> probably, right now? We not, probably could. Not to start a rumor here, but <laughs> but I I do still have the dot com. Um, am I free to is welcome? It- oh, Katie just signed up for this. Uh, <laughs> So is it is it just audio or is there like a video screen share aspect to it? Just video. Or just audio. I'm sorry, just audio. So you just literally put in your headphones and can be doing I was painting walls while listening to it. <laughs> like I was writing last week listening to it. I just didn't I didn't have to it, it, it I almost did it through osmosis, basically. Huh. Huh. So it's a nice little background thing kind of in lieu of a podcast, but it's actually a lot of people. So that'll be interesting. I, I hope it it's interesting. I, I'm worried. I'm worried that like like all the influency people will ha- latch onto it and that's it. You know what I mean? And that's that's not enough for this app to keep going. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll all be talking to each other about how we can talk to each other better. <laughs> and um, but uh, but, it's but it's in invite only mode now. Uh, that's how I got in. Uh, uh, thanks to you, Amanda. Uh, so, but if you look up Clubhouse, it's the one with a dude with dude talking. <laughs> so, uh, like it's a black and white photo, and you feel like it's something else. But um, Chilla was already taken. Ah, you can reserve your name. 
Okay. Yeah, you can. And I have invites left, so there you go. Definitely. Hit, hit up Amanda. I have a I have a I have an invite invites now, so we can we can expand the awesome universe in this app. So I think I'm still in a room with you, Katie. Am I? Is that what's happening? Are you seeing this? <laughs> I'm like I'm adding interest. I think it's interesting that it wanted to pull my info from Twitter. Yes, like it filled out my entire profile from from Twitter. I think it had other options too, didn't it? It it just gave me Twitter as okay. my option. I don't know, maybe it. And and now I'm I can add interests. I don't I don't have interests. Uh, yeah, the interests are weird because like you look in and it says you know they're they're ha- what you're having conversations about when you get in here. It's like hanging out, wellness, identity, places. World affairs, arts, like they're so broad. Hustle. That was the one I was looking for. That was where the weird ones were because that was the, at the top of my list was hustle. And I guess that's where you find your TikTok people and everything like that. So, um, but um, yeah, there's some Instagram, Instagram marketing secrets, tips, tricks. Actually, this actually might be um, pretty good. And, and they do they do have uh, a lot of um, um, groups like, um, let's see. I, I just saw the Black Working Girl one, Women in Business, like you mentioned, Amanda. So there's a lot of options out there to find you know, kind of people in whatever tribe you're in. So that's good. That's awesome. Clubhouse, check it out. Try to get in. Reserve your name. Hopefully Chella didn't grab it already. So uh, from that, where are we at on time right now? I I'm, I keep looking at my phone, which says 9.41 a.m. when you plug it into anything. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Um it's it's about chilla pumpkin time, so uh, I guess we can wrap things up here in a moment. Muppet Show coming to Disney Plus. I forgot to watch it once on Netflix. I think, or wait, maybe I got the DVDs. Was it on Netflix? Am I am I thinking that wrong? But either way, that that's a big one. That's a big one. Um, anything else big? I think that's about it. We talked about Legos. Okay, I gotta touch on this one real quick before we head out. There's a homebrew setup to use the Labo kit. That was the cardboard set you could get to kind of make other games or make a backpack robot thing that would move your guy on screen uh, from a little bit ago. Somebody reworked it to be able to do a full body Mario Kart workout. It looks like they turned it into like a, a bike kind of situation and uh, you can you, you basically have a Mario Kart exercise bike built out of Labo and home homemade uh, items as well. Uh, this looks pretty cool. And, you know, I was in that mind, mindset with um, with uh, Apple Fitness this week. So that was cool. Chilla, at Chilla on the Twitters, but not on the Clubhouse. No, Chilla579 on the Clubhouse. It's a, it's a good if alternative. One of you, if you, if one of you would like to toss me an invite, I'd be be happy. There you go. Oh, I can invite Katie to speak. Let's see what's up there. Uh, so, <laughs> um, and uh, Katie, Katie, do this. The Dutters. You you are all over all the podcasts apparently now. Yeah, I just keep popping up everywhere. I go away and then I just come back. I think people get annoyed <laughs> over me, and then I'm everywhere again. It's like she's releasing a book or something sometimes, and I'm like, "What is she promoting? She's just around, just you know, <laughs> show up. Just she, it's just a, a periodic Dutters tour." Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're uh, we're gonna. Uh, pe- go hey, ahead. Oh, sorry. Good. I was leaning <laughs> into that. <laughs> I'm Dutters on uh, Clubhouse now. Uh, Kate Marie PGH on Instagram, K Dutters on Twitter. I am horrible at social media. Uh, somebody who was good at this would probably have all the same handles across the board. But... <laughs> at least, at least you're on TikTok now, and I'm not tagging whoever the hell that other person was. So. <laughs> Dutters PGH. That's me on TikTok. Look at because Dutters was already taken. It was like uh, K Dutters was already taken. I think that was mm-hmm. weird to me. So, but anyways. And Amanda Narcissi over at boldpgh.com, Bold Pittsburgh. Follow it on your on your Apple News. I'm I'm sorry, I'm doing all your plugs for you. I'm just excited that I figured out the Apple News part. Yeah, Bold Pittsburgh on Apple News, um, Bold PGH on Twitter, Bold Pittsburgh on Instagram, Bold Pittsburgh on Facebook, and TikTok, Bold Pittsburgh. We're everywhere. There you go. Go follow all the things. Please follow everything at Awesome Cast. Everything Awesome Cast at AwesomeCast.com and uh, the Patreon and such over there. 
and uh, and uh, we'll see you next Tuesday. I don't I don't have a, I don't have a guest yet. We'll see what's going on. Uh, <laughs> so and uh, but uh, but and also if you haven't yet, check out our conversations. I got videos clipped out with our. Uh, special guest the last couple weeks. Uh, last week, the button pusher with Grind City TV and uh, Brian Sykes uh, of Start the Beat and the Normal Creatures. I was typing the wrong thing into YouTube. Um, but uh, th- those interviews are clipped out over on the YouTube page. If you want to just listen to those part with uh, whatever the week's tech was, you can you can uh, cut that out and get right to our conversations there too. Um, please go check everything. Please review us, especially on that op- Apple Podcast type app that you guys have out there if you are of that side um thank you guys we'll see you next time uh you have been our awesome audience have an awesome week